greater than you desire to say anything on your own behalf in mitigation of punishment. Your Honor, Cedric County, the victims, I do realize that the crimes have committed. Can you work? Okay. Uh, the atrocious crimes I've committed is continued as a, the Cedric County is a monster. I brought the community, my family, the victims, dishonor. And there's no, and it's all self centered, as a, what you could call, I would call a sexual predator. Today is my final judgment for me. The last couple of days in court, presented by the state, their PowerPoint presentation was very powerful. A couple of things I might point out toward the last, but overall, most of that was true. And I think the Cedric County ought to be proud that they do have a good state, that the evidence was there earlier, the DNA, the floppy. There was, there was no way that I was going to get out of this. With remorse, responsibility, and corrections are the concepts of apology. The old me started whatever it was, Factor X, sexual predator. The volcano was the building of all those years was the Otero. And probably the most devastating and upsetting, and let me tell everybody, is Josephine. I just don't know. Self-centered, very selfish, and it exploded on that day. And it did continue, off and on. Dishonesty, definitely. Dishonesty, probably the first thing to the people that I encountered, that they trusted me, that I was willing to tie them up, take their money, and leave. And then I killed them. That's dishonesty to my family. <coughs> that, uh, that lie and cheat to be self interest to my employers and to the county, you know, the taxpayers' money. <coughs> pride and responsibility? Yes, I had pride back then. To some degree, I'm trying to. I drop down to that, but that's the media. I, I, they seem to crave the attention of the media. I think through the years that that's quite presentation during the presentation and all the archives that I had, you can understand that. I think, I think the bottom line of the old is a selfish, very just associated with, with society, uh, self centered for my own purposes. And I, and I take that full burden on my shoulders. <coughs> Victims. I wrote some notes down. <coughs> I don't know if this is really appropriate or not. And these things came, a lot of these came out of paper because I didn't, I knew the people. You all know why I chose them. But I thought I'd share some things. Kathleen Bright. And I hope I don't tread on the media because I did use this, some of this from the media because I didn't know this much from people. <sighs> she spent time on her grandparents' farm. Well, I did too as a kid. I have many, many, many fond memories of that, and I took that from her. She went to Valley Center. I was at Valley Center High School for two years there. Walked the halls, probably at the same line. Shared maybe the same teachers, although they would have been older. She worked at Coleman, just like I did, trying to fill a job, as anybody would. Try to keep, you know, our heads above water, and I took that from her. Dolores Davis, she loved animals, and I worked with animal control. I realized that in the early years, I probably did have some cruelty to animals. That I don't think if anybody asked. Park City or anything, they, they would say I was, I was always pretty good to animals. I have, I have a great fondness for animals. I have pets, but I know she had it. 
And I read somewhere she had her last Christmas with her family. And I did too. That was a wonderful time. I took that from her. Nancy Fox, <clears throat> she was a wonderful person. And I did I did track her just like a predator. She was a wonderful young lady, well organized, hard worker, and I took her off. Maria Hedge, she was a neighbor. I want to walk by, wave to a gardener. I love to garden flowers. She attended church, the same church I've been to with the Boy Scouts. And Joseph Otero was in the Air Force. I was in Air Force. He was a husband. I was a husband. Although I always wanted to be a pilot, I always had a fascination with aerodynamics. And he was a pilot. One time I even thought about taking pilot lessons. And a veteran. I was a veteran. So our, our threads are close. Julia Otero was a lot like my wife, my loving mother. She raised kids. And she also worked at Coleman. Josephine. She would have been a lot like my daughter at that age. Played with her Barbie dolls. She liked to write poetry. I liked to write poetry. She liked to draw. I liked to draw. Someone mentioned that she was like peace in a pot. And I think that probably comes to wish that I would can put that down. Give it credit to them. Joseph Earl, too. He was just like me at one time, a boy and a dog. And again, that comes from people. I have many, 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 <coughs> many memories of the dog. Excuse me. Well, anyway, I had a lot, of, <coughs> a lot of memories as a kid with my, one of my pets. Boy, the dog is a, a thing you have to have when you're a kid. Shirley, she was choir mother, probably a, a very beloved mother, and I took her life. Probably of all the people, I didn't know Vicki Bynum very much, although I walk by her place and can listen to the piano. I appreciate music. That's one thing I always wanted to learn was piano, and I took her life. She's also a beloved mother. She attended a church that I went to once, St. Andrews. I hope I haven't left somebody out on that. Okay, to rebuild humility. Basically humbled myself now. The detention center I'm going to tried to realize, work with the police department, work with my defense, and tried to realize my faults. Honesty, again, I think I cooperated with the police as well as I did. I understand there was some smoke blowing, and that was probably my demise. Uh, the afterlife, the smoke, the thing about Jakey Allen, the smoke, the BTK story early, parts of it were smoke. The problem is I did lose so much smoke that now nobody knows facts or fiction. And that's basically my demise. I'd be very honest with my attorneys. They worked very hard. We met almost every day earlier before the plea, somewhat less after that, but it's basically all over. And I, Steve encouraged me not to go with an early plea so he could do more. They did all the things they could with the floppy. They had an expert come in, go over the floppy, to see whether there was any problems with that. They did extensive research on the DNA. There was a sore spot with me when they took my daughter, but I understand in the law enforcement you have to do certain things. And I think, honestly, people will say, I'm not a Christian, but I, I play by him. So, <coughs> anyway, I faced up to the man himself now, my boss. I think that all points to accountability and full responsibility now. And my remorse, well, I think, I think it's here. Uh, 
you know the uh, victims' families won't ever be able to forgive me. But, uh, I hope somewhere deep down, eventually, that will happen. When this happened, I was, what I would say, not a total in one time. Part of me, only the, thought, only the thoughts have compartmentalized. That is probably, as the, the uh, state show, started show today, was a compartmentalization of me. And that has been my biggest record. Flip back and forth. I'm not proud of that. It's just, I, it was this escape mechanism, defense mechanism. mechanism. I could switch back and forth fairly fast. I explained to the defense, I was kind of like an 18 wheeler. Uh, either uphill or downhill, I could switch gears very fast and rapidly. Uh, back and forth. And, and as I stand here in this humble way, and maybe people think that I've done that, gone back to a court park noise, but I don't think so. So anyway, it has given me the faith to see him today and not to bring the past a little more clearly. Corrections. And this is the full responsibility. I'm going to the Kennel Institution uh, in full, full board, and I do not expect anything but the hard 40 today. I expected that on the plea. That's why I stepped up for the plea. Uh, I knew after I talked to police, you know, the evidence, there wasn't any way I was really going to get out of this unless we found some way of, of uh, some evidence that was just totally out of it. And it was, in the trial, would have been a long, drawn out to the plea. There was no way that uh, I was ever going to get out of this. But I think the corrections, I'm away from society now. I'll do my healing process there as well as I can and start my new chapter in life. And I suppose in all good time, and as Raider, everybody knows Raider has to complain a little bit, so I would like to do some minor ones. Not because I want to complain today, but I want to set the record, this is my last time. Uh, the probably the biggest problem I have right now, and we're still trying to answer, is what happened to Mendoza. I had a trust with that person, a psychiatrist. The defense is working on it. I know other people are working on it. That was a, I just don't want to happen. And maybe that will happen. Uh, another one is the, uh, and I, I'm just basically expressing this. I don't have control on it. I wish somebody would take part to his lien on the house. That, the final victim, as Mr. Davis said, is my wife. Me. <clears throat> Excuse me, Joe. Well, anyway, I'll get back to that. She is my final victim. That and my family. She knew nothing about this. And yet, the laws, and I understand it because the lien went on the house, is because I have property. There's a lot of defendants that stand up here don't have anything to go after. I know this is very expensive. I probably the defense is running somewhere 80000 90000 It's just about what the house sold for. If we wanted to a trial, it would have been millions and years. So I, I just basically ask that whoever does that final judgment that they think about the wife. The other one is, uh, and not a biggie, it's not this last issue, is that if I'd ask for my wallet so I could get some personal pictures out of it, I was hoping that the defense would have a court order that before I leave today I can go through that wallet and take some family pictures. But that's not a big issue because I understand through code of ethics the defense will turn that probably over to the family as well as my clothes. So those are really those are the only really complaints, except for PowerPoint. I don't, and I, again, I don't want to pick on the law enforcement. They've done a very good job, but I do want to clarify a few things, just for the records, because this is basically my final say. In the first one, there was two actors that were brought out: Jane Walker, John Wayne, and James Bond. The action of that with Kevin was the shooting, not because I stood up and shot him, because when I was working with the police, that was a what I call a quick draw, just like that. And that's what I called the John Wayne shot. 
It's not that he would do something like that. Secondly, we fought, and for us to fight, he had had both his hands open. The PowerPoint said that he basically stood up, he was tied, and I shot him, and that's incorrect. He, we, he fought, I backed off, he had his hands out, and I shot him again. And again, these are only minor. It does not make any difference. It's probably irrelevant. I just want to set the record straight, and that's all, sir. Ryan, it was in the PowerPoint, it was perceived that I was strangling Shirley, and I stopped to be comfort the kids. That's just the opposite. She or I both put the kids back in the bathroom, comfort them there before we went in and, and what happened. So the toys and all that were put in there earlier. Let's we'll clarify that on that. I know, sir. And this is really minor, although it makes you wonder whether the information is tended or not, the evidence, and what makes you speculate whether law enforcement did do, although they looked like they did a good job, whether they did it 100 percent. The doors, Davis, Graves, they flip back and forth. Anybody who knows anything about geology, structure, was trees and stuff or not, I'd like to see They were over in the eastern part of the United States. So, and those pictures that came in the mail were not, were not the other ones. They were all from the grave site at Sheen. Probably the most damaging to me was the uh, pornography. They displayed, yes, they had pornography of what I drew, but I didn't see where they had a lot of pornography, but they brought two pictures out. Family will know that I didn't own a camper. I had a pickup with a camper top, but it didn't have any shelves in that. So I basically evidence was totally tainted. They either picked up a picture from somewhere else or inserted it or didn't realize it. That may have been a relative, I'm not sure. But I would think if they had more pornography, they would have showed it. That's it. basically the clarifications. The other thing is, uh, with the law enforcement, uh, there seemed to be, I was equated uh, as a dog catcher. Uh, I did go to AJ law enforcement. Uh, I felt like I did have rapport with the law enforcement people. Uh, during the confession, as they probably said in the paper, and I'd still probably be talking if a, if a defense person didn't show up. Right, we had a good rapport. They were, I almost felt like they were my buddies. At one time, I asked about Lamoni and maybe coming in and having a cup of coffee with me. So there was a rapport. I've always had a great respect for law enforcement. Uh, although I wore a back black hat instead of a white hat. Thanks. I can't believe the people that have helped me on this. Uh, starting with, you know, I, I think. The U.S. Society have to, even though I'm a criminal, I think you have to appreciate the police department. They've done a lot of work. Even though it took a long time, they gathered evidence, they had that evidence, but when they got the key suspect, they zeroed in on it very rapidly. So to have the dedication that, like Mr. Landwehr, for all those years, is great. So I think Cedric County really has a good police force. <coughs> Defense, this has been a unique probably a different type of case that they've ever had. We've had our ups and downs, but mostly they've been good. It's, it, it's just like a new learning curve. It's just a new curve, and the media has just been terrible. Uh, I worked with the media afterwards, and it, 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 I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just tremendous. And they've done very good. Sarah has probably been my, probably my workhorse. I really appreciate her. She's done a lot of good work. Steve, he had to keep uh, heads in all this, and I know that was very hard, very hard for him. I want to go ahead, since I worked with defense very close, give them all personal. I'm sure I go through the list here. I already mentioned Steve, Sarah, McHenlon. Everybody knows Steve. Another one that helped me was Jamal Mitchell. I think she's on a case today. Probably, uh, is that correct in Elberto? Or somewhere over there? Okay. Uh, Leanne uh, Starrich, she was a social worker that did a lot of research for me er earlier, so I appreciate her helping that. There's Jenny Blind, who was a special investigator, and then Jamie Chimer, she's the one who cut my hair and brought my clothes up. So I have a, you know, they're basically my family, so I appreciate that. 
On the professional staff, although we had some questions with uh, Robert J. Mendoza and what happened there, I think that time that will be solved. But I still have to give him credit for coming in and helping me and uh, working with me. And I'm sure, I hope I can pronounce that right. It's Tala K. Walters. She was the other doctor that came in. And they were all from Cambridge Forensic Society for consultants. So I really appreciate the defense. They've done a lot for me, uh, kept me advised. Sedgwick County Detention Center. Ah, I was really scared when I first came in here. I've never been, I've never been arrested before. I really didn't want to look. I was basically 40, 43 days, 42, 43 days up there in isolation. Uh, at first, the uh, officers, patrol officers, they call them deputies down there, pod deputies. Were, they didn't know me, I didn't know them, but they, they finally opened up and they became human, and I think they realized I was human too. Eventually, I moved over to pod two, uh, and that's a very much camaraderie with what I call the dirty dozen or the or the, the peas in the pod. There was a bunch of great guys. Most of those guys are gone now. But I, I have a lot of respect. I, I sit down with them. We all, all have crimes. But there's you basically build a camaraderie with those type people. The people who move me around, I'm what they call, uh, I call it hot peppers or habanero. We wear red. We have had the special movers. And again, I hope I pronounce these from the detention area, I hope I pronounce these people's last names right, and if I leave somebody else, I apologize for that. One I have is Robert Henshaw, Captain Barbara Maxwell, Captain Glenn Kurtz, the Lieutenant, Larry Braggs, Sergeant, he's my main sergeant. He's one that's been very, very close with me, worked with me, David Millen, and I have a lot of respect for him. He's been my main, main sergeant. I'm the judicial. I'll probably mess up his last name, but it's Daniel Fardens friend, and I I messed that up. I'm sorry. And then it's Brad Paul. There's many, many, many more beyond those. I uh, would be here a long time if I helped. So I do appreciate all those people that helped. Um, Pastor Clark. He has been my main man. Uh, come see me every day. Or not every day, excuse me, at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. If anybody I was dishonest to, is that man right there? <clears throat> Under the house of God, I created these things. Did the trust his acts. And for him to for him to stay with me and remain strong. It's, uh, yeah, he's a good man. I appreciate that. He also went with me uh, earlier this week, went through confession. I sat down and went through each of the, the people I killed, and we confessed on that. And, uh, and, and I felt a strengthening some bonds there at that time with him. Family, the last victims. I, I don't even start with them. Uh, you know, they're still supportive a little bit. My wife's going on, divorced. She's trying to stay out of harm's way. Uh, since my kids are away, I, I don't get much letters or anything from them, but they're they're basically supportive. Well, friends. Without friends, a person I don't think in this Hundred, well, I've been here 175, 176 days. You couldn't survive without friends. If you didn't have family to support you, if you didn't have something, uh, or someone to come to you, like Pastor Clark, you'd go down. Just mentally, you'd go down. So friends have been a very key part. The uh, people in the pod, uh, the pod deputies, uh, sergeant. Although they can't have a real friend relationship with their friends. So. I got this out this morning or the other day when I was working out. This comes from the Daily Devotions, a Christian book. It's called Touched by a Stranger, which is an article. And at the bottom, there's an article. It's by Hess. There isn't a first name for it. But it's something like a friend would do, and I really appreciate it. Like refreshing rain in the summer or the gentle breeze in the spring, just a little gift of kindness, joy someone hearts can bring. 
with immediate exposure to my family, <clears throat> basically had to almost to stay away. So I really didn't have any support. There was one people, one person that stepped up, Christina Casanova, that really helped. And I really appreciate her support. There's another one that's out on the West Coast, Andy Parshaw. He's another Christian. And I really support. I would have gone down a long time ago without their support. So I do want to mention their names. Christian Bible verse I found that I think it's helping me, it will help me, and leading me. This is John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. He who follow me shall not walk in darkness, but have light of light. Now that I've confessed, put myself out to let everybody know what's going on, I expect to heal and to have light. And then hopefully someday God will accept me. I think Central County, myself, we speak of a man as an evil man. The dark side was there, but now I think light is beginning to shine. So I appreciate the family, the friends, and all I can be thankful for. And I think that will keep me from finally going to the dark side or hell. And finally, I finally apologize to the victims' families. There's no way that I can ever repay them. That's all, sir. All right, thank you very much. Thank you to be heard. Oh, sir.